In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Arnold's Sky Dome. So we're going to take a look at the Sky Dome features and then look at putting an HDRI into the Sky Dome. So here I have a little scene and I just have a few torus knots. I have applied an Arnold material to these and we're going to set up the scene so it reads Arnold. So let's go into our render setup. We're going to go in our production render, scan line renderer, and make sure it's Arnold. In the Arnold systems, we're going to make sure legacy 3D maps are supported in case we want to use those. And then I'm going to go to Active Shade and do the same. Change it to Arnold. Systems, legacy 3D max map supported. Now, when I render, it'll read the Arnold material I have applied and work properly with the Sky Dome. So let's go ahead and put in our Sky Dome. I'm going to go to Create Menu. I'm going to go to the Arnold Lights. So Create Lights. By default, it's photometric. Change it to Arnold. When you look at the Arnold Lights, you only get one light type. We're going to click on this. And by default, it's set to Quad. I'm going to change that to Sky Dome. And once we have this, we get all of our settings. We'll take a look at these in a second. The next thing I want to do is just make a physical camera. So I'm going to hold down Control C and that's going to put a camera in my scene. And then I'm going to drag in my Arnold Light, my Sky Dome. I'm going to right click to end that operation. And now when I go and take my active shade, you'll see that it's blown out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Arnold Light, go into our Modify tab, and adjust our exposure and intensity. So we're going to bring our exposure at least to half. We can bring it down even further, but I'm going to go down to half. And then I'm going to bring down my intensity to something like 0.5 and see how it looks. We're going to go a little bit lower with the intensity. So 0.02. We can see it. So we can come up a little bit. And it's just too intense at an exposure of 8. So with this, we have a few different choices. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of these. Right now I have my render settings real high from a previous test. And I'm casting shadows. Okay. So in here, I currently have light shape visible. And that's why we see the white in the background. So it's rendering out the light. If I don't want to see that, I can turn that off. And now we'll just see the black alpha background. Now the next thing is down in color and intensity. If I want to change the color of the light, again, I'll just turn on this button so we can see the background color a little bit better. I can come in and just pick a pick a color and light the scene. We can also pick a preset, so incandescent, daylight, or we can come in and enter a Kelvin value. So 7500 is very blue. If we want daylight, we're going to go to 6500. Now we're getting a white light. If we want a more orange light, we're going to go down to something like 5500 and we'll get a more orange light. For our HDRI, we're going to be using the texture. So if I come in and turn on texture, you'll see it says no map. And we can put a map in here and use that map. So I'm just going to click on no map, go up under bitmap. And then I already have a few HDRIs I grabbed from HDRI Haven in my scene assets images folder. So I'm going to grab this dirt bike track, open it, and we can just keep our default settings. And now we have the HDRI lighting the scene through the sky dome. So again, if I don't want to see that backdrop, I can turn it off. 
I can also come down and start making changes to the way this backdrop looks. So if I come up and go into my shape sky dome type, we have a resolution. And we'll take a deeper look at this in a second. But this is the resolution on your reflection. And then under format, we have angular, mirror ball, or lat long, which is latitude long longitude. So that's the one we're going to be using by default on this. I'm actually just going to grab my camera because I have a physical camera in the scene. And I'm going to come pull back and you'll see it's just not reading the horizon the way I'd like it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make adjustments in the material editor. So I'm going to open up the material editor and then I'm going to drag this texture into the material editor. Leave it as an instance, hit OK, double click on this map and change it from, let me move this over, change it from texture to environment. And now it's aligned properly. Now, I also have a change in the light setting. I'm going to change the mapping from screen to spherical environment. And now it looks more correct for this scene. If it's not aligned correctly, you could do one of two things. Um, I can rotate the light or I can rotate my offset in my material. So again, if I rotate my light because the material is attached to my light, this becomes an easy way to do it. If we were up under the environment, render environment, and we put our map in here, then to change the orientation we would use our offset. This is how to set it up. So in our sky dome, with our resolution, this is the resolution of our reflection. So this should be set to the resolution of your actual HDRI, but it is going to take longer to render. And you can lower this um, as long as it's supported in your reflection. So once it starts getting choppy, you know, you need to you need to crank it up a bit. My HDRI is 2000, but I really am not going to see a difference between 1000 to 2000, so I'm not going to change it. I will bring it down so you can take a look at it. So let's just put another material in here or adjust the material so that we can see these changes a little bit better. So I am going to go and just truck in on my scene a little closer so we can get a better render. And once this renders an area, you'll see we have a lot of noise um, in our scene. But I do have my render samples at one. So we will we'll play with this and clean up in a little bit. But let's go and just take a look at what that reflection looks like. So I'm going to go into my material and I'm going to go down to metalness and turn this up to one. And with it up to one, you can see the reflection. So if I bring this down to something extremely low like 50 and render, now you can see how that is affected. And it's more jagged. So again, depending on how much your reflections are going to be visible, um, adjusting this will save you a lot of time. So if I bring this up to 2000 and render, you'll see it's much nicer for the image, but it is taking a lot longer. Because I'm not using a metallic material, the 1000 works fine. And it saves me time with the render. So again, I might actually lower this. So we're not using a portal um, in this scene, but if I had an interior and I was using my portals, then I would change this appropriately. So if I was doing interior only, which we will look at in a different video later, I would have it here. If I'm using both interior and exterior shots, then I'm going to use this. Um, but for now, we're not using a portal. To make my render, and I'll take this back 
to zero metalness to make my render look cleaner. Again, I can come in and raise my samples. So I'm going to take a snapshot of this, pull it over to the side, and then I'm going to um, just increase my samples. So I'm going to bring it up to three, which is a lot, but just so you can see it does clean it up. Now I still have to make adjustments in my camera and in my diffuse to get rid of all the noise in the scene, but for the reflection you'll see that there's a big difference. So again this is one area you can begin to raise it to get a better um, cleaner result. So I'm just going to save that real quick and then if I go into my render settings and again I'm in active shade so I'd have to make changes to my production render um, before I get my final render but under my Arnold rendering if I were to bring up my diffuse and then bring up my ray bounces to two so we're just going to bring the diffuse up to three I want to have my total ray one more up. Now if we were to run the render, we will get a, a bit smoother result. But it also takes a lot more time. So already you can see that there's less noise here. So I'm going to bring this back down. Um, and of course when we raise the camera that raises all these. So we can also raise the camera to get a better result. Yep, let's close this. I'll reopen my window. And we're not going to get into this too much, but of course we know if I turn off cast shadows I won't get the shadows. If we come down and look at contributions, um, we have our camera contribution. If you turn that off, and we're not seeing our background, I'll turn that back up. But if we have our diffuse off, we're not getting our diffuse color, we're not getting our spec color. So that's what these do. They adjust how much of that um, attribute we're seeing in the scene being affected by that light. So it's this one sky dome light that we're affecting. And this is in case we want to stop one of these or multiples from this light affecting the objects. Alright, so that's an introduction to your sky dome and your HDRI setup.